Welcome to another episode of I Know Jacks, the show where we talk about great local food and fun things to do with friends and family. In this week's show, we're going to start out by making yummy ribs, then we're going to talk about craft beer, check in with the food truck Blazing Asian, and talk about upcoming events and happenings in our region. Now our motto is, eat local, drink local, and be local, and that's what we're going to do in this week's episode of I Know Jacks. Today we're going to start out by going to Whole Foods where they're going to show us an easy way to make delicious, great tasting ribs. So Chef Brandon here is gonna make to us some nice baby back ribs. And so you're gonna break this down, show us exactly how you do this and so that people can do it at home, right? Absolutely, really easy dish to make. Um, Anyone can do it, you can do it often. So you're saying even maybe I can do it? Maybe. <laughs> maybe. I'm, I'm, <laughs> we won't push it that hard. Yeah, <laughs> okay, cool. push it too much. Show me how we do it, man. Okay, so what we're gonna be using is we have about two pounds of um, baby back ribs okay. from Thompson Farms in Southern Georgia. So we're gonna make our dry rub first. Okay. There's quite a few spices that go into this dry rub. About a tablespoon of each. Kosher salt, black pepper, garlic salt, onion powder, cumin, smoked paprika, chili powder, crushed chipotle powder, ground allspice, oregano, light brown sugar, and regular sugar. Next up, mixing. That's the complicated part. Yeah, this is the part that... Uh, special to tools are necessary there. Super special <laughs> tools. A lot of training went into learning how to do this just right. Exactly. I can smell it though, that's awesome. Yeah, it's really aromatic and it's gonna be really nice on the meat. You can use any types of ribs that you like. I like baby back. Okay. They have a nice flavor, they're real easy to work with, and these are just beautiful. Our butchers cut these just a couple hours ago, so. So tell me about Thompson Farm. That's, uh, it's, a, it's a Georgia, South Georgia farm, right? Yeah, it's a... It's, and what's special about that? What's special about this is that it's a separated product. Okay. Um, and it's uh, five plus. Okay. Which means it's the highest rating that, that the animal can have. You can really taste the difference. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it in half. And then I that, that looked pretty scientific. Everything I do is very scientific. <laughs> and it's taken a lot of training. So we're gonna season them pretty liberally. Um, I like to do the tops and the bottoms. Yeah. I know some folks don't do the bottoms. I know a lot of people don't do the bottoms, but I think you should. Don't skimp on the flavor. Heck no, man. And this and when is when I eat ribs, there's nothing left on it but bones. Oh yeah, there's not gonna be anything left on these. <laughs> and the bones are just gonna fall apart from the meat since we're oh, roasting them in the beautiful, oven. Beautiful, yeah. We'll shake off the excess, rub it in there nice and nice and deep. Man, that smells really good. Oh yeah, it's gonna be great. You're gonna add about a cup of water. And okay. it, again, it's just a guess. You really just want to have a little bit of water in the bottom of your pan. And we're <laughs> going to kind of make a little tent so that it's not... So it's not touching down on the meat. Yeah, not you don't really want to lay it down on the meat. Have it stick to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And with the water, it's going to create some steam. It's going to keep uh, it really I, nice and tender. Uh, okay, it's going to cool. be fantastic. Yeah. I like fantastic. <laughs> I'm a big fan. I like fantastic and I don't like dry ribs. So. <laughs> Those two things. Absolutely. The ribs are ready to go into the oven. Chef says about 375 for an hour to an hour and 10 minutes. Now he's right about being really scientific about his cooking. So you're gonna make up some sauce for us while that's in the oven cooking, right? Definitely. It's a real easy honey barbecue sauce we're gonna make. Okay. Got four ingredients. So we're gonna use... You're keeping it simple because you know your audience, right? I know, <laughs> I, I know my target. We got a spicy ground that. mustard. <laughs> <laughs> a spicy brown mustard regular ketchup, and some local honey here from a Beef Friends Farm. Cool. And you can use any type of mustard you like. You're gonna use about half half a cup or three quarters of a cup of ketchup. I love the scientific measuring that you do. That's yeah, right. That's how I do it at home too. <laughs> about half the amount of, uh, of mustard. And as far as the honey goes, you can be pretty liberal with it. If you like it really sweet, yeah. keep pouring. If you don't want it too sweet, then stop about halfway. Gotcha. Then we're just gonna whisk that together. I'm still with you on this one. Right? This is pretty <laughs> easy. Make sure there's no lumps of anything. All right, then we're gonna take and put a little bit of orange zest on here. You just really wanna 
get the skin off until you start to see the see white, white pith. Gotcha. Yeah. You don't want to really go too deep because the pith is really bitter. Right. So you're and, just trying to get the oils from the mm -hmm. orange. Yeah. Absolutely. Give it a nice citrusy flavor to it. And if there's any left on the back, go ahead and add that in too. Sure. That's where most of it ends up, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and that's it. That's all there is to it. Really easy. I like really easy. <laughs> Me too. I'm the same way. <laughs> we're still waiting on the ribs, so meanwhile, we're doing a dish for the non-meat eaters. This is a uh, tofu dish. It's going to be a honey sesame tofu dish. It's, uh, it's got a little bit of sweetness from the honey that we're using. We're going to be using, once again, the uh, Bee Friends Farms right yeah, here in yeah, Jacksonville. I love it. It's going to be great. We're going to end up using this entire bottle by the end of the day. It's going to be good. <laughs> I'm ready. It's going to be good. Yeah, I wasn't convinced. Ribs, I'm all in for, but tofu? I don't know about that. Chef Brandon starts with the marinade. He added two ounces of tamari. It's just like soy sauce, but gluten free. Two ounces of honey. And you can use more or less. If you want it really sweet, keep pouring. So for me, it's really sweet. I keep pouring. <laughs> <laughs> he also adds toasted sesame oil. It's almost like a dressing, but thicker. If it's too thick, you can add some more tamari. If it's too thin, you can always add a little bit more oil or a little bit more of the honey. honey. Mm -hmm. We're using extra firm tofu for this dish. It's easier to cut into pieces. I'm not a tofu guy, but you're gonna, you're gonna convert me, right? It's really good. You're <laughs> gonna love this. It's gonna be nice and sweet. Honestly, he already had me at honey, but the tofu, I'm still a bit suspicious. Brandon drains it, sits it on a paper towel for a little bit to soak up the extra water. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be bone dry, right? but it also doesn't want to be soaking wet. Gotcha. Then he cuts the tofu into small planks. He puts them on the sheet and then he, well, pours the sauce over it. You can marinate them for half an hour or for 10 minutes or overnight. Okay. Um, I like to kind of roll them around a little bit so that all the sauce gets covered. It's going to cook for about 25 minutes at 375. Uh, you really just kind of want to get some brown edges here. Okay. About halfway through, we're going to flip them over so that all the sides get brown. And when they're done, you have a nice caramelized color here from the sugars. Right. Um, if you want them darker, leave them in a little bit longer. If that's too dark, bring them out a little bit sooner. 25 to 30 minutes is right where you want it. Perfect. Be. Cool. Um, Chef Brandon puts a few on the plate, drizzles a little bit of extra sauce on top, and sprinkles the tofu with both black and white sesame seeds and scallion for a little bit of color. It's beautiful and it tasted good too. But now, I'm ready for the ribs. So what yep. are we going to do now? Really, I mean, you could be completely all done with it and they're going to be great. Right. But we really kind of want to, you know, <laughs> but, but we have this great saucer we're going to use. So you can see that they're already drawn up a bit off the bone. Right. Um, they tempt at about 155. The sauce we made earlier goes on top of the ribs, and then the ribs go back in the oven at 375 for five extra minutes to seal in the sauce and the flavor. Chef Brandon says he likes to leave a little bit of extra sauce for dipping. Is everyone so I can go in there? Yeah, you always want more <laughs> sauce. So. And that's really it. I mean, there's really nothing else to it at this point. Finally, the ribs are done. I am so ready to eat. Chef Brandon cuts the ribs and adds some extra dipping sauce on the plate. This is perfect for tailgating. Now here's the really cool thing about this. I know this was a really simple recipe, but if you're like me and you can't keep up with stuff, go to inojacks.com and we're gonna make sure we have the recipe for you there. As you know, in the month of June, I'm participating in the Great Cycle Challenge. It's a 30-day challenge to raise money for kids' cancer research. I made a pledge to ride a thousand miles in the month of June. I also started a Nino Jacks team to help me raise funds, and it's going pretty good. The team has ridden about 700 miles. We've raised about $761 so far, and I want to thank Kathy and Ron, Natalie, Lisa Ann, Steve, Michael, Lee, Aaron and Tracy, Kevin and Mary, Dino, and Buddha Thai Bistro for your generous donations. Thank you guys so much. Now I have my work cut out for me for the coming days because I ended up with a summer cold and couldn't ride it off for a few days, but I'm back in the saddle and cranking away. I'll be posting updates again on Instagram and Facebook and you'll be able to follow my journey in detail. Will I make a thousand miles before the month is over? 
All I can say is I'm working hard on it. And if you want to support me and the team with a donation, that would be awesome. To do that, just visit greatcyclechallenge.com slash teams slash I know Jax. I love our Jacksonville food trucks. I really do. We have so many good ones. I'm lucky because every now and then I get to judge food truck competitions and that means I get to taste a lot of delicious food from different food trucks. And today, we're going to visit one of my new favorites, the Blazing Asian. Blazing Asian is a food truck that uh, uh, is an uh, Asian fusion kind of food. We have uh, our, our main thing is a fried rice, uh, like teriyaki flavor, uh, choice of uh, uh, chicken, beef, shrimp, and salmon. That's what they like uh, for, for lunch, uh, lunch business. Uh, the sushi side, we have cooked raw and deep fried, so it's, we have uh, so many choices in the truck. The thing that caught my attention was the tuna tataki taco. Tuna tacos, yeah. Uh, so it's made from a, 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 a gyoza skin, okay. and a deep, deep, we deep fry them, and then we put a, a, our tuna, seared tuna in there, uh, with a, a spicy mayo, our special spicy sauce. We mix it up with cucumber, uh, mango, avocado, and cilantro, and then we, we put a, a wasabi mayo on top. So it, it has a really nice texture to it, uh, because it's really soft on the, on the texture of the tuna, and then have a crunchiness from the vegetables, just cucumber and mango. Right. Mango itself gives a, like a, a extra flavor to it. And then the spicy sauce. So it's really, really nice together when you have a bite on it. And then it's, it's like, it's melted in your mouth, but have the, uh, the crunchiness for the, for the taco shell. So. Cool. You guys won one of the food truck competitions with the tuna taco, right? Correct, yeah, yeah. <coughs> we won the, the, the tuna tacos for the best tacos uh, when we were here at the Henning Park as well. Yeah. I was one of the judges. That's how you came into. Oh, that's nice. How, yeah. nice, nice. I'd actually nice. had the truck before you owned it. Okay. And I was like, normally when it's a new owner, you don't know. Right, right, right. And then right. you did that, and it was something they hadn't had on the truck before. So that really made me go, okay, we'll do something because you guys are bringing some new flavor to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Like that's it. thank. Thank you so much yeah. for that, Joe. I really appreciate that. <laughs> so, like, like I said, I'm trying to bring the the the, the food and a truck at the next level. Tell me about your background. You, you, you've done a lot of different businesses from what little research I've done. Did you have a clothing line? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we have a clothing line back home in Bali. Okay. In Indonesia, yeah. We have a clothing line. And then uh, I built those lights right there. The lanterns? Yeah, okay. the lanterns, yeah. Where are you gonna go with Blazing Asian? You're gonna have 10 of these trucks? What's the, what's the plan? The goal? Um, we, we just uh, kind of go with the flow. So the goal is a uh, uh, brick and mortar, build up the business, and uh, uh, be a good vibes in the community. There's a lot going on in our region this upcoming week, and we have a lot of fun events to look forward to. And here are a few that look, well, interesting to me. If you're looking for something to do for a date night, here is an idea. Every Tuesday, admission to the Cummer Museum and Gardens is free after 4 p.m., so if you haven't been in a while, Tuesday after 4 is the time to go. Now, the museum is open till 9. You can visit the gardens and the exhibits. Also, it's tapas Tuesdays in the cafe from 5 to 7.30 p.m. Another fun idea is to head out to Neptune slash Atlantic Beach for the North Beaches Art Walk. This event is held the third Thursday of each month from 5 to 9 p.m., rain or shine. This is really the best time of year to go on this art walk. And in this area, there's a lot of nice places to sit down and have a drink or dinner afterwards. Concerts in the Plaza St. Augustine's Summer Long Music Series has returned for its 28th season. Concerts are held every Thursday from the gazebo in the Plaza de la Constitucion starting at 7 p.m. The stage play, Not In My House, is coming to the Florida Theater. This play comes with suspense, twists, and much, much drama. Not My House is on June 23rd. There's a lot of other stuff happening. The Jacksonville Sharks are playing at Veterans Memorial Arena on Saturday, June 23rd. It's Uptown Saturday night in St. Augustine, and as usual, we also have Riverside Arts Market on Saturday. For more ideas about fun things to do with friends and family, check out my post with the catchy title, Fun Things to Do in June, on my website at iknowjax.com.
Hey, and welcome to What's Brewing in Jacks. Every week I take a look at what's happening in the craft beer scene in the Jacksonville area. I'm at Really Good Beer Stop on 3rd Street in Jacks Beach, and today I'm having a petite sour from Crooked Stay. Voodoo Brewery is now being sold in our area, so they're having a kickoff event right here at Really Good Beer Stop. Come meet the people behind the beer from Pennsylvania and taste a pint. I took a peek at their website and they have a beer called Voodoo Love Child that's a Belgian style aged on passion fruit, raspberries, and cherries. And that one's definitely for me. Come to the brewery night on June 19th because you don't want to miss this one. Now I'm one of those guys who likes watching stand-up comedy on TV, and yes I said on TV. I don't go out and watch comedy that often, but I have and I enjoy that too. Here's an event that I would enjoy. It's called the Brewery Comedy Tour. It's a national tour traveling to about 100 breweries around the country showcasing up-and-coming comedians. This time the Brewery Comedy Tour stops at Intuition Ale Works. That's on Thursday, June 21st at 8 p.m. Tickets are 15 bucks and available online. June 21st is actually the first day of summer. It's June solstice. We're going to celebrate the dog days of summer with Engine 15 right here at Really Good Beer Stop. There will be some excellent Engine 15 brews on tap, some swag, but most importantly, hot dogs. Why not? Hot dogs and craft beer to go, go together like dogs and bones. Really Good Beer Stop is going to the hot dogs on Thursday at 6 p.m. Sometimes you need a little push to get your creative juices flowing. Craft beer can do that for you, at least if you come to Really Good Beer Stop for a candle making class. Get it, candle? That's pretty clever, right? McMaddie's make really cool candles out of beer cans, and during the class, you'll be making your own too. There will also be fun games and a pint of craft is included, so get your creative juices flowing on Saturday, June 23rd. Now, if you're an adventurous IPA enthusiast who likes to taste different brews, this one's for you. Alewife is having a home brew competition for specialty IPAs, and here's how it works. Go to Alewife, get a taster cup, and start sampling. <laughs> They'll have a bunch of talented home brewers pour pouring their brews, and you also get to vote too. And by the way, if you want to compete, check out their Facebook page for the sign-up link. The specialty IPA homebrew competition takes place on Sunday, June 24th from 1 to 3 p.m. at Alewife. That's it for this time. Now, if you want to try a petite sour from Crooked Stave, hurry to Really Good Beer Stop. They have a great selection of craft beer on tap as well as cans and bottles. They have 20 beers on tap that they rotate all the time, so there's always something new. See you here. Cheers. Jacksonville Beach's ultimate craft beer and growler store. That's it for this week's episode. I'll be back next week with another show. But before then, I'll see you on the internet.